And hello again, everyone, and welcome back to PTN Racing TV. We are live here tonight at Martinsville Speedway for your East Coast Racing Circuit Truck Series and the one in their second to last week. We will showcase them before they head to Phoenix Raceway next week. Hi again, everyone. I am Christian, the Crusader Shriver. Welcome back to PTN Racing TV. And if you guys are wondering, oh, wait a minute. Hey, wait, where, where Crusader, where is those overlays? Oh, don't worry, folks. I got you covered. But before we do, let's go ahead and look at... At the gridding order here tonight. Let's start him up. Here we go. On the pole, it will be Paul Jerky in the 43. It is outside. That's going to be the 6, uh, Kyle Jackson. Row number 2, that's going to be Brian Doty in the 39. It is outside. That's going to be Brandon Coleman in the 51. Row number 3, we're going to see the 54, William Estes. It is outside. It's going to be the 12 of Nick LePage. Shotgun on the field tonight. It's Mike McMillan in the 42. As you can see, we updated. We got a little bit more creative, and we definitely have a whole new lineup of things to show you guys here tonight. So let's get down to it here and show you what all we got in store here for you. Let's get this one ready to rock and roll. Get a good look at our drivers here tonight of the East Coast Racing Circuit. As you've seen there, the 43 of Paul Durkee. That is the 6 of Kyle Jackson there. The 39 right beside the 51. Brian Doty in the 39 and that 51 of Brandon Coleman. The 12 of Rick LePage and then that 54 of William Estes to round out our field then will be Mike McMillan in the 42. That is your starting lineup for tonight's action, folks. 
as they get them on around here we'll situate it on by and bring these cars to life the next time by ladies and gentlemen new stream new world same broadcasting commentary you don't want to miss it right now let's get down to business folks here we go we'll bring them on around coming by here as they wait for the green flag to come on out next lap by we get the trucks to ready at it and get going here this should be a good one in a dandy and if we can folks share us on around we took a lot of time to get this done for you tonight we'd love a little bit of love back from you robbie lawrence joins on in let the chaos begin now oh, come on now robbie doug craven let's go brain doty and brandy coleman that's the attitude doug back on through let's get him by down at a turn two and this next time we tell the pace truck get the heck off the track we don't want to see you no more we want to get the drivers ready at it here bring him on around waiting for the green flag to fly this time by here we go coming on down at a turn three and a four it'll be brandon coleman leading him off here coming on through lights are on and everyone's home green flags out And already off the line through the chicane, they bring it on down and around they go here. All drivers jockeying for position off to a strong start looking for the run. Oh, a little bit of contact made already. Big trouble there, unfortunately. We got trouble already coming out of turn three. Caution, caution. Woo. That was a little bit of a hard run and a half there to say the least here. Let's go to the PT and Mr. Replay and find out what happened there. That was not the way you want to start out here in this case. Here is your PT and Mr. Replay. Let's take another look at it from another angle. So they come on by down that back straightaway Gary. You can see a little bit of a run coming between Estes and the 39, unfortunately. Big trouble there as Estes gets right in there with him. Brian Doty takes the lick and the half and unfortunately not the start that him and Brandon Coleman wanted here. We're going to go on board here on this restart. Take a close look at this here, folks. I want you guys to take a very good look and then look around when they run these tracks around. You can see how tight they have to get off the throttle and get into the turn, tighten that truck up and try to make the move there. You can see that run that Coleman's got. And right there, you see Doty just kind of braked quick and Coleman just went for a ride. Estes didn't even realize he hit him that hard until it was all done and over with. That is the dangers that lie within this track, and that's why they have to be careful when they're running on this track and running these guys' line. Looks like Estes will get put in the back here. Possibly Doty right now is already two laps down after having to go into pit road here because of that little hiccup he had. So as we get them on by here, we will see our drivers come back on around, get things going. And by the way, folks, how do you like the new uh, overlays and all that? I know we haven't changed the SDK Gaming logo, but don't worry. Give me about another week and a half. Maybe tomorrow night I'll get that fixed up for you. Tonight, of course, also we will have our drivers of the Split Decision Racing League going at it here. They'll have a little fun on the track going at it with one another here. As everybody works them on in, getting situated through, we will see the stars and the cars come back to life here, hopefully, in just a little bit. Double file coming off here. Remember, folks, they do get the option to start in position that they want, so when they go green here, they will go ahead and get their chance, or, well, I guess, actually... They're going to stay in the position they're at as that green flag flies yet again. Back underway. We're back on it. Jack, Kyle Jackson, man, fighting it in there with the 43 of Paul Durkee. Paul Durkee trying to stay ahead of him, coming down that back straightaway. Ran it about, coming in and out at a turn. Three and a four now. Kyle Jackson moves on in harder as he can now. You got the 42 machine there. Of 40, of the 42 is Mike McMillan. McMillan trying to get up there with the 51 of Brandon Coleman. Coleman right now trying to make up for the early ground loss in that one. They'll bring it on down and about out of turn three and four. Sorry for the hiccup there. We're not really sure what happened exactly. I think it might have been something on the cameras end there. 
as they bring it on down around here yet again. Hopefully that little glitch didn't mess anything up here. Through and through, they come on down yet. Here we go. 200 laps to the distance here, folks. And right now, only on lap nine, Kyle Jackson, man. He's just kind of laying low and just laying it in easy. Paul Durkee right now in a whole different mindset as well as Brandon Coleman in that 41 machine. Or excuse me, the 51. Because he is a lap down, he's trying to get back up into the running here and try to get some positions up. As you see, Mike McMillan there trying to get up there with the 54 of William Estes. Estes right now kind of doing his own thing, laying low, maybe trying to stay out of trouble zone. There's a difference between going into auto zone and going into trouble zone right now. There's definitely a reason for that, but as they bring him on back out of turn four here, everyone's still jockeying for position, still running their line in. It is so easy to overdrive those corners. It's so easy to lose up on that momentum, and the biggest thing tonight is going to be all about who can maintain control, maintain position on these restarts and on these lines. And right now, as you can see, they're doing a pretty good job holding their own, doing their thing here as we're going on board here. With Kyle Jackson in the sticks machine. Hopefully the producers don't have me another jump cut here from that. Looks like that's not the case here, thankfully. So it looks as though they bring it on through. Listen carefully on Kyle Jackson. Listen to how hard he has to get off that throttle when he goes in that corner and how much he's breaking. Whoa, even right there, that's a good example of what I was talking about earlier. And that's when you're coming off those exits, the possibility of overdriving and overturning it, or as we call it in the racing more sports, oversteer. When you're trying to line it up and get the spot in, if you get that rear end swung out just a little bit on the exit, you don't have anything to save that front end because there's no banking here. So the biggest thing you're gonna see tonight with these drivers is who can outpace and outmatch the brake and banking here. Because there really is no banking at all. As you see Kyle Jackson at six machine, Gets right up in the wall here. And Robbie Lawrence from earlier. Well, if the mullet man was in there, it would be. <laughs> uh, you're never going to let that one go, are you, buddy? Back on through here. Ball Durkee in that 43. Crab Delight Machine still has the race lead there as he's got a hard charge coming from the old six machine. Back on through. They come down out of turn one, down into turn two here. Everybody's still in a good position, jockeying for the run. Leading them on in. We'll focus on a little bit here. The less the field is Mike McMillan there in the 42. Still doing his own thing in the half of the Steve Boat Toyota Tundra right now. Just kind of laying in there and laying into the throttle. But William Estes is the only man right now that really has a pretty good chance to even get close up into the position and possibly have a run on him here. If he can get the momentum built back in and get something figured out here. He's got a lot of time and ground to go though. And he needs to start building up in the Bronto because right now this is not looking the way I would think he should on the early going. Now, granted, it is early. But if you can see kind of how the runs are right now, Kyle Jackson is running a pretty smooth line in his position. But the problem is he's drifting up so high on that middle section that it's not helping him much to get around up to Paul Durkee in that 43. And I'm going to show you why here on this little overhead view in the cameras. So in this onboard camera, I should say, as you see right here, watch how tight he has to corner it in and watch how close he gets to the turtles. Listen. You hear how smooth he drives off that spot and off that position. That's the key to Paul Durkee's success right now is he's able to run off that spot and off that position very nicely, keeps a good run and a half here and keeps it stabilized for him to be able to run that area and run that line. And that's why right now he's staying ahead of Kyle Jackson. Now William Estes, the 54, looking to maybe make a run here on the 51 of Brandon Coleman. Coleman's still trying to get his lap back, unfortunately, from earlier. One lap down at the moment, still charging up his way, though, making it all out here. Fights it on through it here. As they bring it on down, Coleman has to get on the brakes a lot tighter there. And now Estes looking to challenge him in for that. Moves it on through, coming on down that run there. He's got a nice run and a half coming for him as he builds it up back on by. Now Coleman is outside line, not too, looking too good here. He doesn't want to be there. Can Estes make the jump? Can he make the run there? Coming out of turn four here. 
Not quite just yet. He's going to have to build up momentum again. He had that inside line there of Coleman, but I think he backed off on the throttle there to stay in it. So really good clean racing tonight from Rodney Christensen. Rodney, it's good to have you on board, Grandpa. Sir, Larry, you got to come visit the PTM studio, my, fr my, my friend. It's, seriously, I changed up a few things around here you might want to see. Back on through here, Kyle Jackson still in a pretty sizable gap right now currently. Judging by times-wise, Paul Durkee's got about a second on him, about 0.95, 0.96 right now at the moment. And overall in position, he has not left his spot from where he started. He started in second and has maintained that position all the way through. William Estes, though, right now, he's got a sizable position going on right now for him. He's actually is two up from where he was at in McMillan. It's the fat is the hard is the heavy charger right now. He's currently three up from his position where he started on the qualifying grove right now. Speaking of Estes, here comes Estes now to the inside, moving it on by. We'll see if he can challenge up the 51 of Coleman. You can see Coleman's giving him plenty of room here. He just can't get the run on him. The East Coast Racing Circuit, Rocky Ridge, number 51, trying to stay ahead there. Oh, old Estes. Estes trying to build up momentum to get around him. And that Manchester Market, number 54. The Toyota Tundra versus the Ford F-150. Who will be able to gain the ground on this one? The inside almost takes a little lick out of Coleman. He's got to look in the inside. He's got to look here coming on by. Still hanging on for what it's worth. Neither driver wanting to quit. Neither one wanting to give an inch here. Everybody wants to make the move and make the pass on by. But you know what? You gotta be careful about how much you do that. As SS now swings to the inside. Now he's got a run there on Coleman, it looks like. But he still can't quite capitalize. Incredible driving and consistency from both drivers, but he just can't quite get that run off of Coleman. And Coleman, man, he's fighting for everything he's got to stay ahead of the curve. As Rick LePage in that number 12 machine now getting put back up onto the high side. East Coast Racing Circuit, number 12 now, still fighting thin there, still doing everything he's got. Back on through the Manchester market though, number 54. Lapping him on by and getting more position up on this one. As you focus him on in right now, the, the six of Kyle Jackson. Running his own area, running his own world. Currently right now, Brandon Coleman and Rick LePage are currently about a lap down of so each other here. Rick LePage about a second and third about a second and thirty away from Coleman. So if he can catch him, yeah, he'll definitely get the time back on him. And take over for fifth, but right now it's not looking too good for him. He's just kinda lying low at the moment, just doing his own thing. But again, you know, we've seen crazier things happen around here. That's that's a lot of stuff that goes on in these stuff. So we'll see who's going to be able to outpace the other. As right now, Paul Durkee, you can see the race lead he's got. He is plus two seconds ahead already of Kyle Jackson. The American versus the Canadian here. Kyle Jackson right now doing everything he can to get back into the running here and try desperately to get something going. But it's just not working for him right now. It's just not there. And I think he knows it. He just doesn't know what to do about it. As we go on, as we go to the uh, Sky Cam here, look at this. This is, ladies and gentlemen, the paperclip track known as Martinsville Speedway. This is a very unique track, very small in size, much smaller than Bristol, much smaller than Nashville, and a few other tracks around the world. And it has no, it really does not have any banking whatsoever either that kind of separates it from the other drivers in the other series when it comes down to runs and momentums. It's very crazy to think, but, you know, this track is very similar to road course racing, in my opinion, where you have to kind of figure out how to run more of that line, more of that position, as it looks like a pass on by there as Brandon Coleman passed up Rick LePage here. Let's take another look and see from another angle here where that started at. So as we bring you back on board, let's show you what happened exactly here with that pass here. Brandon Coleman goes to the inside here around Liquid Page and William Estes and managing to take over that position, giving him a nice run and a half here. And so far right now, even though he's a lap down, he's still hanging in there. Don't count on the page just yet. 
William Estes right now finally gets around Brandon Coleman. So Coleman and Rapage will go at it there. The C-class driver there of William Estes putting a beating on the A-class. The B-class right behind him here doing a pretty good job here. Paul Durkee, an A-class fellow driver with his boys like Mike McMillan and, of course, Brian Doty. But they also got Kyle Jackson who and Rick LePage with, with Brandon Coleman that are B-class drivers. So they de if you're wondering at home, what is that exactly? Well, what it is is basically they are designed to set them in a, cer a certain class, certain area on safety rating and I rating. So the more you win, the more you're driving safely and giving good, clean laps the more you can improve on getting to the front and more towards possibly running with legit pros. And that's exactly what we're seeing right now is currently we're at lap 40 of 200. Currently right now, second place right now is Kyle Jackson. As we get a good look from the new Broadcasting center here. We're getting showing everything here going on right now. See as he is currently still running them on by trying to get up there with Paul Durkee there. Paul Durkee is about three and a half seconds ahead of him here. About 3.10, 3.20 right now. He's still fighting for everything he's got to stay in this. But you can tell right now, man, this is not looking towards really his night in this case. He's just got to work this one in. Paul Durkee right now, your race leader. Still the overall guy that everyone's chasing down right now. Still the guy that everyone wants to beat as you get a good look here in that Ford F-150. Paul Durkee, the 43 currently is a show on screen. Currently first place. Got a good size, almost four seconds ahead. Actually, he has four seconds ahead now. Kyle Jackson, he's making this look stupid easy out there. Whoa, and looks like some hard runs there and some hard hits. Looks like... Mike McMillan passed on by there. We'll go to the replay and find out more about this one here. We'll see what happened here. Whoa, William Estes up into the wall there. He has crashed on the front straightaway, folks. Oh, my. Let's go to the replay here and take a look at that. Let's see where it starts here. They're going to come out of turn four here. And Estes just, like we said earlier, he just kind of, Want to stay away from overdriving it. It happened right in front of the flagman. Flagman caught it. Estes thankfully able to get it back to back to wrap, back alive here. Well, that will definitely set him back a little bit in time-wise and position as our drivers work him on through. Paul Durkee going at pit side here. With Brian Doty in the 39 also jumping out there. He'll stay in the position here. Jody just looking to get last back at this point. As we bring him on through yet again, Brian Doty, a mainstay here. He's been definitely showing himself quite a bit as of late, doing what he can, getting everything he can settled in and figured out, but you know, as we mentioned before here, man, this is a hard road to really follow, and it's a hard road to really continue on with when you're not careful with certain things. So as we get ready to get back to green flag racing here, folks, we'll cut to a quick commercial break, and we'll be right back with some more PTN Racing TV for the East Coast Sit Racing Circuit. Zeiss Race brought to you in part by Stoneworks. If you guys are looking to get the best stone designs and all that, be sure to visit up Durkee Stoneworks here today to get the best stuff your way, your how, and make sure you can get a patio and all that furniture set up on the Porsche. And by Freedom Landscaping. Better known and operated since 2013, Freedom Landscaping does all the right stuff in all the right ways for your needs when it comes down to the way the lawn needs to be to where the grass needs to grow. Freedom Landscaping is the way to go. And as we get our drivers back on in here, Kyle Jackson has taken over the race lead here, so he will have starting lineup here on this position, on this restart. He'll have Paul Durkee right behind him, and this is going to be interesting to see if he's able to make a jump around that and get a bigger move on him here.
Rick LePage, you see there, will have his hands full here and have his momentum really cut off here as they get situated on by here. This will see the drivers coming back to life here in just a minute. As the light starts to dim around here and everything starts to kind of tiptoe away around, we will see our drivers get back underway here. This time by now, we are ready to go back at it here. Coming on through, down out at turn four. Kyle Jackson will lead them on in, shows them the way. We're back underway yet again. Green flag flies. And off that restart, Paul Durkey shows you what fresh tires will do for you on a track. Jackson put back in the second as he's got the third at the 54 of William Estes right behind him charging him on and looking for a run and a half here trying to keep his momentum alive trying to stay ahead of the curve William Estes doing everything he's got to get up there he's currently closing the gap up on the six of Kyle Jackson Jackson's gonna have to remain focused here if he wants to keep this one you're on board here with Estes See that home alone, number 12, the six of Jackson right now, just doing his own thing, doing his own stuff. The 54 of William Estes right now still trying to close the gap on in, trying to figure out how to get around that cat right here because he's currently leading them on in for good, in good position, I may add. Jackson will lead them on by still as we have reached one quarter of the way here so far. It's been a frenzy right now of activity, a frenzy when it comes to racing here between these guys. Everyone is just kind of trying to figure their own line out, trying to figure out how they want to run this one through. And you can tell that it's definitely been a long, hard road here. But they're all chasing down right now. This man currently the leader. Paul Durkee still leading it on by currently. Started on position wise. He started in first. He has yet to change up since then. He's been kind of just doing his own thing, kind of working it on through. As the rest of our field works on in, Rick LePage right now currently in that sixth slot, but right now he could be in trouble territory for being lapped by because Brian Doty is the only driver still that has laps down at the moment. And he's trying to hang in there with these guys, trying to fight him out. Paul Durkee now to the inside yet again, moves on through. Durkee moves it in through, moves a nice position on by, and that will take over for third and fourth on the third turn three and four here, I should say. LePage down by one. Brody Doty is down by three. And Kyle Jackson has been passed on by from William Estes there. I'm not really sure where that pass came from. Go ahead and take a look at the replay and show you what we saw here. It looks like coming out of turn one and two, Jackson goes a little wide here and gives up position. And Estes is able to make that move on by and make a nice jump ahead of the ahead of second and take over that spot for him. Serious runs and a half coming from him. Serious racing here for these guys as the clouds kind of start to come on in. It means it's going to get cloudy and dark outside. The 51 there, Brandon Coleman giving it everything he can in that, Rick, in that Rocky Ridge East Coast Racing Circuit Ford F-150. He's just trying to get up there with that old Chevrolet Silverado. Everybody in a hard press battle here. Everyone's still jockeying for position. Hard to tell who's going to get this one and who's going to get the better of the other here. Through and through here, Kyle Jackson the inside. Paul William Estes moves it on by, still hanging in there. Working on by, Kyle Jackson still hanging in there. A little bobble there from Estes. 
Coming out of turn two. Now Jackson swings to the inside. Nice run and a half coming from Jackson. Moves it on by. Nicely done. He maintains position and gets ahead. Here is now Brandon Coleman in the 51. Will now take it over. Throw it on back here real quick as they come on through. Brandon Coleman still doing everything he can at the moment, trying to fight him on in. As we swing him on around here. Estes still giving it all he's got, trying to run it through, trying to make the inside line work. Estes yet again puts Coleman up to the high side, and Estes will take over that position. Nice pass on in there, Coleman. Still duking it in, still fighting hard here, but can't quite clear it now. Mike McMillan in the office, Depot 42 machine. Looking for a run and a half here. Don't mind that, folks. We just had to put the replay up for a minute. As right now, Paul Durkee, I want to talk about a guy that's got a sizable distance and lead. back on in still everybody jockey for position Estes right now trying to get back into the hunt here and trying to see if he can find some momentum he lost from earlier Brandon Coleman giving it everything he's got right now working it on by hard charging his way above trying to stick in this one Coleman and Estes right now doing battle. Estes has the upper hand here as he comes on through. Staying in there. We're going on board here, Coleman. on around yet again still you can see the 51 of Brandon Coleman giving it everything he's got to get back around Estes but man it's not it's, it's a dog eat dog world out there right now and those guys are going at each other down and about yet again Coleman trying to stay ahead here Coleman right or excuse me Estes trying to stay ahead while Coleman looks to try to get ahead I should say All drivers jockey for position still. You can see the tire rotors actually burn up really hard on those things. That means they're really working the brakes in there. When you see those sparks fly and you see cars, you see the trucks start to really get hot and glow red or go orange, that means they're working the brakes extremely fast and extremely hard. Well, we're just about halfway through this one right now, and these guys... I've definitely been putting on a show, but Brian Doty right now currently followed back to behind early goings. We'll see how well Brian Doty is able to stay in this one, stay in his position, and maybe get himself back into the hunt here with these guys. But currently that 39 Toyota Tundra, or Ford, excuse me, Ford F-150, is not looking the strongest out there to say the least but you know it is early so you never can be too sure as we go back on board here looks like we've got the top six of kyle jackson starting to work his way on in as brandon coleman has passed on by william estes yet again here estes looks like he's gone in pit road here he's just going to try to make himself a chance or two with rick lepage there as well coleman stays out he's currently working on burnt tires and paul durkey is about ready to lap him which that's not going to help him at all 
Anthony Carr saying he might have to run someone over here. Well, right now, that doesn't seem to be the case. It's been mainly just run your line and run your race and hope everything else comes to play. But, I mean, right now, you can see right here, this is where that little mantra comes from, a bump and run here. Coming down out of turn four here, the 42. McMillan's got trouble as Paul Durkee sneaks his way to the inside. Now builds it on, jumps it by the Office Depot 42 machine. Passed on by there, that Crab Delights Ford F-150 of the of Durkee here. Durkee makes a nice jump and a half. Good run there from them. Good stuff so far. Good showing by the drivers and folks. We always do appreciate you guys tuning on in. If you're watching this in YouTube land or you're watching this over on Facebook, thank you so much for supporting us. And if you're on YouTube, go ahead and like and share and subscribe this show here. This is one of the exclusive contents that we will send over from Facebook to the YouTube land. Right, the quality may not look as good as Facebook, but you know that's that's just the converters for you. But nevertheless, as you see him coming on by here, Brandon Coleman and Jackson are in deep, deep trouble. They are currently second and third at the moment, but you got the leader right behind them, and yeah, that's right, Durkee could be one of only a few drivers to actually lap the entire field in a single race. We've seen it here before on PT Race TV. As he sneaks it by there around out of turn one, Coleman gives up position, gives up his time. Now it's going to be Durkee looking to charge his way up there with Kyle. Jackson swings it on by down out of turn three and a four, really trying to get a hard run there, but he can't quite get the momentum built up the way he'd like to, but stays on the throttle nonetheless and trying to stay ahead there of Durkee. Breaking it in hard, push the rotors to the pedal and put the rest to the metal. Round and about, down and about, yet again. Now it is going to be Paul Durkee taking a whole field and lapping the entire racetrack. This ain't something you see on iRacing too often, folks. This is usually something you see on Heat for crying out loud. That is some tremendous control and momentum runs he has had here tonight. Great driving from Durkee here as Kyle Jackson still trying to find his line and find his rhythm in the home alone six machine you can see though Brandon Coleman's going in pit road here trying to get himself situated by as William Estes and a Manchester marker number 54 looking to get his laps back here he's currently two laps down in position but he's not out of the hunt yet he's going to get around McMillan here which will get him down to one lap or excuse me let's keep him in two laps so he gets around that 43 at Durkee but Durkee well, he's just, he's, he's somewhere else right now, man. He's not even caring anymore about this one. Looks like Coleman's coming out here. So that 51 Toyota Tundra will have a chance at this one here yet again. Rick LePage is on pit road here yet again. Kyle Jackson, the six. Still jockeying for position, still running his line on in. Still trying to see if he can hang in with these guys. A lot going on and a lot of momentum to say the least here. As they bring them back on around, Kyle Jackson with damage on that rear side. They'll see if we can give you a better angle of what that looks like there. There is the angle you see. You get a much better view when you're coming out of turn three and a four here. See that damage on that side there? That fender is kind of kicked in a little bit and it's dealing with all that pressure that came from the wreck earlier. And right now, he's just fighting it for everything he's got to stay out of trouble and stay out in the zone. But that's a whole other animal when you're racing these guys out here. It's a whole other way. Not quite at the halfway point just yet. And Kyle Jackson and Estes almost tagging it in there at turn three. You can say that's pretty much our version of a bump and run right now because Estes had to move Jackson out of the way there to move it on through here as our camera guy's still having some troubles. Thanks a lot, producers. Paul Durkee right now, man, say what you will, but this man has got a sizable lead and distance ahead of everybody, and it's only now that William Estes is even able to catch up to him. That crabs the light 43 of Paul Durkee has just been rock solid all night long, and so far this has not been any different. Estes now looking to challenge up Durkee, make a move coming out of turn four here. 
Run them on by, running on through here, coming down out of turn one, down into turn two. Durkee now has to go the outside as the 54 of Estes will get a lap back anyway, but he's still a whole lap down. So right now, man, he's, <laughs> to put it nicely, he's got some work to do. But the good news is, is he has a chance to get things picked on in. Currently right now, as we look at the lap time and leaderboard right now, currently our laps are showing that Brandon Coleman had a 20, uh, his last lap had a 21.49. Currently Paul Durkee is at a 21.30. And he's running on much more burnt tires than Coleman is, so I gotta believe he's driving very, very conservatively to stay in it. And really just doing all he can and working on by as now you see the 42 of Mike McMillan. Currently his last lap was about a 20.88. Now moves on in around Coleman. He takes position over for fourth. Nice pass on by there. Nice jump around there, if you will, as Brandon Coleman. The struggles continuing and the battles are fighting on. Mike McMillan doing everything he can to catch up to that race leader, of course. As we're almost at the halfway point here now. Solid runs and solid racing here between these guys. Brian Doty right now works it on down that front straightaway here. Jumps it on by down out of turn one into two. Durkee moves on down. Still hanging in there. Doty right behind him. Still giving it all he's got. And Durkee, I don't know how he is doing it, folks, but he just continues to stay absolutely pure and consistent. I mean, right now, the clouds are going down. The skies are getting late. It's late afternoon right now, but the, it's going to be nighttime here in a minute. As the lights take shape here and lights form out here in the darkness, if you will. Still on board there with Paul Durkee. As you've seen how he's handling his track, how he's cornering off so incredibly well right now, man. It's, inc it's just impressive to me that he's able to go from where he was at position-wise on his lap counter and able to stay in the run and stay in the position. Currently, just absolutely hanging on by. So they'll bring him on down around here yet again and Paul Durkee to see the little scoreboard on the thing there. I guess the producers wanted to throw that in for some reason. Saying right there, lap the whole field at least once. This man right now is the driver everybody wants to beat and everybody wants to take on and try and beat out here. But if they're going to do it, they've got a lot of work to do here in this case because they are faltering further and further behind here. Mike McMillan trying to get up there with William Estes. It's William Estes currently. Running on down out of turn one, down in turn two. He's currently about a 13 second ahead there of McMillan. And Brandon Coleman, if you will, right now, just kind of laying in no man's land. Doing what he can. Well, right now, guys, it's early, but as we're about ready to reach the halfway point, it has been all Paul Durkee. It's been Kyle Jackson kind of laying in there. Brian Doty, unfortunately, in those early troubles, that early uh, problems on the start, did not play too well for him here. Neither did for Rick LePage there on the starting line. And Brandon Coleman's just been working all the way back to the end as we now focus on in to our, our halfway point here with Paul Durkee. And Durkee, we've lost connection with him here. Let's see if we get it back on the camera roll here and back on the system. Wait a minute, where is he? I think we have lost Turkey completely, folks. Let's see if we can find him. No, we can't find him, folks. I think he might have lagged out. Kyle Jackson actually has just taken over the race lead, folks. Halfway point reach now. Kyle Jackson. You see the scoreboard right there. Unfortunately, Turkey, he is in huge trouble. He actually lagged out, I think. He's gone. Oh, my goodness. 
the old Grit Graphic Gremlins got him tonight. And that was not what you expect here. We're trying to get word from the producers what happened to him. We're not getting a word there. Jackson right now has got the race lead. And maybe in the most lucky of ways, if you will, if you can call it luck. He's ahead of William Estes by 10 seconds here. Running him on hard, running him on good here, and still taking it in a good position. We'll see if Kyle is able to hold and maintain the position here as we have to go cut to a quick commercial break. But when we come back, we'll find out what happened to Durkee, and we'll find out what ha what is going to come down to the end here for these drivers as we are starting to reach past the halfway point. Tonight's race brought to you in part by, of course, Premium Landscaping, veteran-owned operates since 2013. If you guys are looking to get your land, your yard done the right way and get all your property and stuff taken care of, there only, only is one way to go, and that's with Freedom Landscaping. So call them up at 336-909-0629. So right now, judging by our time scanner and everything, it appears that Paul Jerky has unfortunately been gone and removed. He has lost connection entirely, so he has been put in the back of the pack, and that means that Doty will finally get his time back away from that, but he's still a few laps down, unfortunately, as the rest of the field will try to challenge him up for it. Brandon Coleman is one of those drivers right now. He's currently a lap down. Estes is the only one that is not a lap down, and currently he's starting to charge his way up to the front here. That's crazy to say the least here. Durkee was doing extremely, extremely well. and All of a sudden, that little little problem, that little issue here, line there, ends up costing them big time here. And being in the cat bird box, the cat seat, if you will, that is S William Estes as we go on board here with him. You can just tell right now, he's really starting to put more power into that truck there. Because he's trying to get up there with Kyle Jackson. He knows he's got a chance to get him. And he's actually bringing him in about six seconds left here on him before he'll catch up to us. I think in the next five or six laps, you're going to see a big change coming up for Jackson if he's not getting some momentum built in. We'll see how that plays out. It's Mike McMillan right now in that Toyota Tundra 42 Hoffman's Depot machine. Still winging him on by. Still trying to find his way ahead here and get out of the trouble zone. He is right now in third, which is hard to believe because he's a lap down at the moment, but Paul Durkee lapped him already by, and so did Kyle Jackson. And William Estes, too, for that matter. So hard charging his way in right now, currently. Still doing what he can here. As our show, as our showcase here, Mike McBillan here currently third, as you see on the screen here right now, fighting it on through as hard as he can to get up there out of turn two, building on by here, getting a nice run and a half here from the driver's perspective, and currently from where he's at in position time-wise, he's just trying desperately to get something going here. Kyle Jackson though is your race leader at the moment, but it looks like McMillan is going to try to pass him on by the inside line here to take him on through it. Coming out of turn two, they go. Jackson opens the door up. McMillan takes it, but I don't know how much that's going to cost him for the later half of this run if Estes can catch up to him. Estes seems to have a little bit more momentum coming on those corners and turns and the straightaways. That seemed to be playing more into his advantage here. And folks, like I said before, we'll have 45 minutes here before we go live to our next show. And Jackson will go in pit side here, and I think that might just be what that 54 William Estes was looking for here. He's going to take over in position and take over the race lead now on down about that front straightaway. Keeping him on through, keeping on by your top five right now as we showcase here. William Estes, Kyle Jackson, the cop. Kyle McMillan, the 51 of Brandon Coleman, and the 12 of Rick LePage. And McMillan has now passed on by there around Jackson, so now he'll actually take over position there on that spot there. 
to take into position and take an accountability of what's going on right now. Brian Doty just kind of laying low. Paul Durkee, unfortunately, hard times for him tonight. He was doing extremely well, but, I mean, in the Internet world, sometimes that just happens to you. But I can definitely say it was not fair to him and his talents here tonight. There was definitely a lot of racing he had to do just to stay in that position. As you see, the brake rotors on that 39. I don't know if we can get a good look at it here, but let's see if we can see it coming down that back, on that turn here. Actually, you can see it right there to the right there. Look carefully. You see how hard those brake rotors are burning up up on that machine there. Take a look at this here of Brian Doty's 39. See the flames kind of popping out, but look to the right, the inside there. You see the brake rotors are absolutely on fire. Just trying to stay ahead of the curve and stay ahead of where he's at and what's going on right now. Still, they've got about a good 89, 83 laps left in this one to complete. Brandon Coleman right now doing everything he can to stay in this one and still fight it in. Kyle Jackson staying ahead here of Kyle Millick, of Mike McMill McMillan. I'm sorry I called Kyle McMillan earlier. I'm sorry about that. I didn't mean to say that. Jackson back out. He's currently a lap down, but now he's caught back up to William Estes. He's got a hard charge of the crew and on the, on the front straight away they go. Whoa, that was a hard charge there from Jackson. He goes way up in there. Whoa, that was what I was talking about earlier. You don't want to do too much of that. You got Lewis coming out of turn two there, and Estes saw it. He knows he's trying to catch up to him, so he's overdriving those corners and hitting him much harder than I think Estes really was intending. At the same time, probably was seeing Jackson get a little bit more aggressive here. But, I mean, any little wrong spot there, and that would have been bad for both drivers here. But Jackson, being ever so professional, stays out of trouble and out of position. Running him on through here. Rick LePage currently doing everything he can to hit him on by. And that East Coast Racing Circuit number 12 machine. Oh! Jackson out of turn two! Ho-ho! Oh -ho! God, mighty, mighty loose there. We're going to the replay. I see that one exactly because that could have been very ugly for Jackson here. Let's take a look at the replay. The replay popping up on screen here. Let's see right here coming out of turn two. What did I say earlier? You don't want to overdrive it right there. He gets a little hard on the throttle, bashed it in. Stays out of trouble, but definitely he is in a little bit of a heap here. Trying to stay focused on what he's trying to do, which is just trying to get in there with these guys. Estes at the moment right now, just kind of laying low and doing his own thing. He's working on a little bit less of tire wear, which is definitely helping him out for the good haul here. But I would say he's needing to get things figured out here and get things more figured on through as we look at the lap time here. You can see a big change in difference here from lap 21 and lap 22 and 23. Let's see what comes up here for Estes on 24 as he stays ahead of Mike McMillan. Times wise right there, Estes about a plus 174 now on McMillan. He is just leading this one through like it's nothing, folks. Incredible driving on his end. Rick LePage currently just trying to stay ahead of not being lapped. Kyle Jackson right now trying desperately to get back from being lapped. And then you got, of course, the 42 there uh, Brandon Mc of Mike McMillan. Just kind of in that second place spot right now. Just kind of fighting his way on through. But you've seen the times earlier. You've seen the lap counter earlier between them here. Now I'll show you the difference here from lap time between second and third between McMillan and Jackson here. see right there Jackson has a, a little bit of a positive here he's actually gaining ground on him and McMillan at the moment he's losing ground more and more here he's gonna have to start fighting back a little bit here because right now Jackson is starting to really put all his beans in the basket and start to really showcase what he can do here 
If he can start getting a second or two on him, that's going to really play into the advantage here. Brian Doty, unfortunately, I don't know what really else to say other than just he got really in that incident earlier. Falled his back and faulted in big trouble zone, and now he just currently, I think, just trying to find a place to hide. Not too happy about that one, I would bet you. Tough break there for him. Of course, Lamartinsville, not a track that's easy for anyone. This track is very hard to run. I was down there earlier today actually running these trucks again, and I'll tell you, the first thing I really noticed that really grit grinded my gears was just how hard I had to get on the brake just to even get the car to take a set. Now, admittedly, when you're running this line here and you're running this spot, you don't want to try to burn the tires in too much. You want to try to smoothen it out as you go, but... Whoa! But not quite like that, Brandon Coleman, man. Whoa! That 51 Rocky Ridge machine ended up getting right into the wall, coming down out of turn two yet again. Turn two is just trouble, and now turn four is giving him trouble. Damage up on the rear end of that. The front, front, the front grill is also damaged up pretty bad. Trouble, unfortunately, for McMillan. He is not going to be too happy about that one as Rick LePage still stays in it. Your race leader, though, William Estes, man, he's just laying low and just doing his own thing. As he still follows and pursue, doing his own thing here, William Estes right now, as you see on the scoreboard, out on the board here right now, your race leader. By a good margin of error here. Still though, as they work him on by yet again. Well, sounds like a little bit of spin around and that's why here, Brandon Coleman yet again. Huge troubles for him here. We're going to the replay to take a look at this one. Something not going right there for him on that turn here. Let's take a look at the replay. Comes on by down out of turn one into two. And that definitely sent him for a ride there. Managing to stay clear of trouble, but definitely not the way he was expecting it to. We're about three quarters of the way here, folks. This one is starting to look more and more like the Estes story. And less and less like Jackson or McMillan to get up there with him. We're going on board here with McMillan, though. Runs it on through here, coming down out of turn one, down at turn two. Coleman tries to stay off that throttle a little bit more off exit to get the car to take a set. Seems to work this time. But you can see right there, the 42 of McMillan is just doing everything he can to get up there. Jackson right now, actually, he's fighting back pretty good here. Actually, he's made a lot of ground up in his position and in his battle to catch up to William Estes. Let's take a look at the lap time right now, currently. And you can tell Jackson, man, he is every lap so far. He's been gaining ground on him. I mean, I'm, if I were you right now, SS, I'd be kind of worried because if he's gaining ground on me even by a half a second, I would probably want to stay focused on my line, stay focused on my shot, and ignore the rest here. We'll see what he gets here coming on down out of turn two here. They'll bring it in and have to get one into lap 140 here of 200. And you can see right there, times wise, Jackson actually is slower now. He's lost ground and position up there. And Estes actually with the faster time of the bunch, managing to stay ahead of the curve and stay ahead of his position here. McMillan currently in third. And the second to last right now, that's 39, currently at sixth. But Brian Doty, Brian Doty right now still trying desperately to just get himself a little bit of a luck and a little bit of a hand here. And that climax number 39 machine, you can see where he's trying to corner off of, but it's just not working to his advantage here the way he'd like to. Meanwhile, Jackson right now, he might have burnt his tires in a little too much trying to get up there with William Estes. And that really has been the kind of the key factor here for this one as he moves it on around out of turn three, back out into turn four here around the Rick LePage in the number 12 machine. Rick opened the door and it was Jackson that took it on by. Got himself a nice position there. 
Man, these drivers are fighting scratch tooth and nail for everything they got, trying to get ahead of one another. But, you know, right now, as William Estes actually is at pit road right now, Jackson will have the race lead away here. So now my ultimate question is, is how long will he keep that lead away from Estes? Because early now he's put him two la he's put him a lap down at least. Four tires going on there for Estes and a splash of gas there for him as well. Kyle Jackson right now, I think he's just going to try to lay low and stay out of trouble zone. Might not be a bad idea in this case, but right now, it looks like overall this is pretty much turning into the show here for Kyle Jackson to kind of make his move and make his work around. Try to see if maybe there was some stuff used up there for him. William S is there, but we're getting word that he had not, we are not getting any word on whether or not he used tires and fuel there. And at pit lane right now, it's going to be Mike McMillan there. So he will go in as well, trying to hang on by as Estes moves on through now. He's going to try to do what he, Jackson did to him earlier and try to full throttle assault it all the way around here. Moving it on by, we'll focus in on Estes for the moment as they continue it through, folks. So past the one third, three quarters away here, folks. This has been quite a bit of a run here and all that for these drivers here, man. This has been something to say the least. Very much surprised and amazed on how well these guys have been holding themselves together and how they've been holding themselves out here. Seven drivers on the track. You can still have a lot of cautions, a lot of problems, but you know, tonight they definitely have been running their own line, running their own race here for the say the least. Coleman right now looking to make a move there on the 39 of Brian Doty. Doty and them go to the high side. Now Coleman brings it straight down to the bottom. Nice pass on through there around the climax. Ford F-150, 39. But it's Kyle Jackson right now who has got the race lead. And judging by a lap counter time-wise right now, 
Whoa, coming out of turn two though. That's big trouble. That's big trouble. And he's going at Pet Road. Estes was starting to gain ground on him anyway, and I think he knew it. And now he's going to have to try to settle in for what he's got going on with it. Brandon Coleman right now doing everything he can to charge it through and stay in the position here. We are down to the last 44 laps in this one, folks. And Rick LePage still doing everything he can to stay in this. Everybody's still running down. So now LePage will go in pit side here. Jackson finally getting out of pit road here. He's a lap down. He's third, currently in third. I got to believe he took a little bit of fuel and took four sets of tires there to get this last run and a half in here. by here down and about McMillan still holding it out William S is still in there as well it's been a hard long road for these drivers been a hard long battle to the end and William S is right now after some early struggles and some early tough breaks there you know I think he may have got the biggest break of them all when Paul Durkee unfortunately just completely vanished across the face of the earth and he was no longer with us and he currently right now is in the shadow realm I believe right now trying to serve a penalty or something but he's currently just he's nowhere to be found somebody please we can find him give us tell him to come back and finish the race and all jokes aside the internet probably got him there he has told us earlier here on the show that he's had troubles with the internet before Kyle Jackson right now, hard charging his way up to the front here. We're going to go on board here with him. I'm going to show you what really makes it so hard to make moves on this track. Now you're seeing him on that fresh set of tires on how clean and precise he's hitting his marks here. But if you look carefully, when he gets about 10 or so odd laps in, those tires go away and the car, truck burns up. That's where trouble starts to really pound in his way here. As he moves it on by, Mike McMillan now gives him up time around Kyle Jackson. Whoa, back into the wall. What did I just say there, folks? Hard little knock and knock there and a hard little hit to the wall out of turn two. But he is caught up to William Estes. But how much damage does that take up on the truck to try to get one last big shot? And he's got about 35 laps left before he's gonna be able to finally make the move around this. Back on around yet again, Jackson moves on in yet again down out of the front straightaway here. He moves it on by, gets his lap back as Estes, I think he's trying to save tires and save up fuel for this last, for this last moments of this race here. This has been some good racing from everybody here and some some strong battles to say the least, but nobody really has had a fair advantage or really a bad has had a bad shake other than that caution that we had earlier just due to breaking. Brandon Coleman right now currently in the fourth slot trying to get up there to the third spot being held by Mike McMillan. McMillan right now though pretty good position I think he's pretty good, solid on his position right now just down sound south back on through down at a turn three and a four yet again and McMillan giving it all he's got right now William Estes laying low playing it cool playing it safe folks we're almost at the we're almost out with 30 laps left to go. I don't know if we'll have time to talk with all the drivers tonight, so just a fair warning. We may only be able to have time to have talked with one driver being the leader, but in this, or the winner, I should say, but I mean at the end. Because unfortunately, times right now, we're currently 
We're in a little bit of a pickle, so we'll see how that one plays out. But right now, as they continue it on through, Brandon Coleman doing everything he can to get back into this, maybe get one last chance at it. Kyle Jackson currently in second. And he's just doing everything he can to get that truck to build up momentum and hit it harder and harder than he has ever before. And you can see times wise right now, he's currently in the 16 marker. If he can get into the five second marker, he's got a shot. But he's got to hurry. He can't be giving up any time or ground to anybody now. He's got to start fighting that turn and he's got to start making sure he gets a good clean turn and jerk out of every spot. As I bring him on back around Rick Page right now, you can see him just kind of gently tiptoeing his way around the track here, just staying out of the zone. He's been battling it all night long tonight. So is Brian Doty. Man, Doty has just had the worst luck of them all, except for Durkee, I would say, because he's just got into that little wreck and he never fully recovered. And with 25 laps to go, I mean, it's definitely showing, unfortunately, here. Kind of off tempoing in there at a turn four. You kind of heard him kind of lift up there a little bit and kind of get back on the throttle. I'm not sure if that was intentional or not. Maybe he's just trying to let the car truck settle in a little bit. Seems to be working out fine right now, but I mean, definitely ties wise right now with 26 laps to go. It is going to be a matter of consistency and patience from Estes. And then hard full throttle assaulting for Kyle Jackson to get up to him there and try to get one last big run on him. S is doing everything he can to stay ahead of the curve, doing all he's got here, still fighting it a thumb through. Yes, this now builds it on down that back straightaway here, leading his way on through down at a turn three and a four. He is still your race leader at the moment. And by a good margin or so away there from Jackson. Kyle Jackson at the moment. Currently just trying to fight the demons to get up here. But he's catching up right now. He's starting to really show what he can do here if he can just get it going. As you see right here, Kyle Jackson 10 seconds plus back. Fighting it through, giving it all he's got. Currently 13 if you want to be that technical about it. But man, he just will not quit. Got to give him credit where credit's due. He just will not quit. But does he have time, though? That's the thing. The Home Alone 6 machine has been running hard all night long, but it's not really. Ooh, let's say right about there is where you really want to be careful. He's in it hard, but now the problem is he's getting a little too hard. And it's starting to lose ground and momentum on that turn there. Turn two has been treacherous for him all night long, and that was definitely no ex no different there. Holds it on by, coming on down yet again here. As William Estes just kind of tiptoeing his way around the track. Jackson is making ground up on him, but the tires are definitely starting to give. 20 laps left in this one now, 19 to go. Ryan Doe to the inside now moves it on through and that Ford F-150 to the Toyota Tundra. Vestas, Estes gets into the wall a little bit coming out in the front straightaway. Stays in it, stays in the groove, stays on line. Estes works it through down at that turn three and a four. Man, oh man, oh man, he's giving it everything he can, but it just will not keep away from Jackson and Jackson right now he's getting closer but he's just getting even harder into that possible till you're getting a wall there we'll see if that plays into his advantage here and plays into later on but right now I can tell you in my opinion that's not gonna be enough I don't think he's gonna have time unless a caution comes out that's the last thing anybody wants to see right now 
This has been good, clean, solid racing, of course. And also, we want to remind you folks at home, the East Coast Racing Circuit is looking for drivers for Season 2 of next year. And it sounds like we will be possibly picked up by them again. So, fans if, and drivers, if you're interested, you know, look look up East Coast Racing Circuit and on here in the chat. And we'll make sure that everyone's aware that, hey, they want to race. They want to go. So, or you can message them up privately here. I know there's a few, I know there's a few guys here that you can probably call up and talk to. So if you see some of the names on here, like Brandon Coleman, just message them up on iRacing and they will get in touch with you there. Nevertheless, 15 laps left to go here. And of course, we still got one last main event coming your way tonight as we will showcase Split Decision Racing League's Family Feud Series once again as they return to have a little bit of fun with us here. They have put on some seriously good times and good moments, maybe for all the wrong reasons, but you know, right now it's actually a legitimate serious competition for the points lead because it's separated by one point. Myers' his family member and Elijah's family member will all go at it. And David's family member, I should say, We'll have to go at it here in just a little bit. Right now, Kyle Jackson, the only thing he's thinking about going at is that wall protection and getting his track figured in a little bit better for next time because he is currently just, in my opinion, way too far behind to catch up to Estes. Estes at this point is just taking this one home unless something crazy happens and there's going to be a caution. I don't see it being happened that way, though, right now. Well, right on around they go here. We've got 11 laps left to go now. Rick LePage up on the wall. Protection there. Again, try to get out of the way there for Estes. Estes sneaks to the inside yet again. Makes a nice jump on around there. Gets a good boost and a good jump and will make his presence felt. Moving it on through here as Brandon Coleman in the 51. Working to the inside around LePage yet again. LePage up on the wall. Protection. Coleman goes to the inside. Currently two laps down, and McMillan looks to make it even more laps down on him as he brings it on around here yet again. Ten to go now for Estes. You can't deny the heart and the fighting spirit, though, Kyle Jackson, man. He gave it everything he had tonight, and it just was not enough, unfortunately. As they bring it on through here, you can see everyone's still jockeying for position, trying to get a run there on that spot. The East Coast Racing Circuit boys are fighting for this one and fighting for anything they got left. As the 42 now makes a little bit of a showcase for himself with Coleman. McMillan showing Coleman the way and showing him how to play here today. Throwing on down that turn two yet again, and Coleman gets into the wall protection. And McMillan, still, man, he is just fighting for this one. He's trying to see maybe get up there with Kyle Jackson there in that six, but as you can see right there, now Goldman's actually starting to get a little hard on the throttle here. He's going to have to be careful about that because if he overdoes that corner there, we've seen it earlier with him, he can get a little too complacency and it'll end up giving him troubles here. Six laps remain here for William Estes here. As they bring it on down around out of turn three, down into turn four yet again. William Estes only has five laps to go, and he's been pretty much making this look stupid easy out here today. Hasn't given an inch, hasn't given any chances up, and left nothing to chance, if you will. Back on through, down out of turn three, down into turn four here yet again. Estes will have the full run and send off. Jackson is just, I think at this point, he just knows it's time. His time has come, but, you know, give credit where credit's due to the fighting spirit of this man. He's already still about halfway across the track, though, and away from the leader. He's not going to get him tonight. Unless Estes makes a jump and a mistake and spins it, you know, this is all his right now. Right now we're down to two laps to go here. 
as our field works on in. The LCS is now coming to the green flag here with it flying high in the air. And this one is all but locked up for him here. Back on through, coming on down. You can see him just kind of driving a little harder there, just kind of a, a way to kind of get this one finished up a little sooner. Final lap coming on out as the white flag is out. Here we go, coming down at a turn one, turn two. He just needs to make two more turns. He gets it down the back straight away, nice and clean. And coming down now, turn three and four, the Manchester market, number 54, Toyota Tundra of William Estes once again returns to victory lane. And what a way to do it. There it is right there. Made official. It is going to be William Estes, the winner here at Martinsville. Second place will go to Kyle Jackson. Third will go to Mike McMillan. Fourth to, to Brandon Coleman. And fifth, surprise, surprise, actually, Brian Doty, man. He managed to stay in that one to the end. He didn't give any chances up there. But unfortunately for him tonight, it was not to be his way as it goes to William Estes. Well, folks, I'm heading on down pit side here. Let's go ahead and have a little word here with our race winner. So we got everything situated on by. We got everything ready to go here. Let's go ahead and pull him on in and see how he felt on that one. All right, now he joins me on in. Ladies and gentlemen, your race winner here tonight, as shown by our graphic card down below, this is William Estes in the 54 Toyota Tundra. William, it was a long, hard road, and you caught a pretty big break when Paul Jerky unfortunately lost uh, the Internet. But it looks like you definitely broke the Internet tonight, man. Can you take this one home, buddy? Looks like we don't have radio contact here at the moment. We're just kind of waiting to see if maybe he'll tune on in. If not, we'll go ahead and just move it on through and call it a night. William, do you got a copy there, sir? Uh, oh. Hello? There we go. Yep, we got you now, buddy. Whoop. Oh, we did. Now do you got it? Yeah, we got you. I don't know. I had to go into the server options for some reason, and I have it m checked muted now. But yeah, this was definitely Paul's race, man. Uh, I don't think I would have had anything for him. Well, he still gave a fighting spirit and a fighting effort, though, on that early going. And then, you know, once Paul did unfortunately lose it in, it ended up going your way. So, you know, with that said, man, you're all the winner here at Martinsville, the paperclip track. So, who do you want to thank you for that victory? Uh, we'll thank the Manchester Market and JB and you guys for putting this shit on. And uh, I apologize to Brian and JB both for getting into Brian there at the beginning of the race. It was just, he broke a little earlier than I thought he was going to, and I couldn't stop. Yeah, that's kind of the way Martinsville works sometimes. Just kind of one little overbreaking or underbreaking, and it just messes the whole line and field up. And that's just kind of how racing is here, unfortunately. But nevertheless, William, you are the race winner here tonight. Congratulations, bud. A good, solid victory to the end. Thanks, sir. Absolutely. Well, ladies and gentlemen, William Estes takes on home the victory here in a solid battle and a solid race here. It was a good showing for these drivers. I would talk with our top three tonight, but unfortunately, folks, we're a little bit on time. To, we're on a time stamp here, so we got to get going here and get out out of here. we got to go. So we will uh, see you guys here in just a little bit, and we will be with the drivers of Split Decision Racing League Family Feud Series here in just a little bit. So from all of us here at PTN Racing TV, thanks again for tuning on in, and we'll see you guys here in just a little bit.